Welcome to Metalacto. Today we are going to discuss water soluble vitamins and that is vitamin B3 or you can say niacin. So let's start. First of all, if you see the vitamin B3 or you can say niacin or you can even say nicotinic acid. So it is actually if you see here like this is the structure of the niacin. Niacin. Okay. So it is actually comparable with the pyridine. So here is the structures of the pyridine. This is the pyridine. Pyridine. Okay. So what actually the difference between the pyridine and the niacin? So if you see like the additions of the hydrogen at the position of nitrogen. So actually in the pyridine you will see lone pair that is actually present to the uh, nitrogen. So this lone pair is given to the hydrogen. Okay. That's why it carries the positive charge. Okay. And you see the substitutions of the functional group and that functional group is the carboxylic group. So here is basically the additions of the carboxylic group and that's why in this situation you can see the nicotinic acid. So this is actually the niacin and pyrimidine are comparable structure and it is actually or you can even say that the niacin is actually the substituted product of the pyridine. Okay next if we move further that it is actually a coenzyme. And you will see the most important two forms of the coenzyme forms of the niacin. So first is the NAD positive and NADP positive. So this is actually the nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. So first thing if you see like the nicotine, nicotine amide adi, adenine dinucleotide dinucleotide so as name indicate that there are two nucleotides that are actually present in the nad positive okay and next you will see the just additions of the phosphate group to the nad positive then you will see nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate so these are basically the two forms and these are basically the oxidized form if we add the hydride ion to these two, then it will convert into the, like this compound NAD positive will convert into the NADH and NADPH. So these are basically the reduced form and these are basically the oxidized form. Okay. Next, if you see like nicotinic acid comparison with the nicotine amide. Same here, uh, it's just a difference of hydroxyl group and the amide group. So here are basically the nicotinic acid and in the nicotinic acid, you will see the carboxylic acid group and in the carboxylic acid group, you will see the presence of the hydroxyl group. You just replace the hydroxide group with the amide group and you will see the nicotine amide. So nicotinic acid can convert into the nicotine amide. In so this is an other thing. Okay. Next you will see that how this process happens. First of all, if you see like this is the niacin or you can say nicotinic acid acid okay next is the if you see here like this is the nicotine amide because you will see the amide group and here is the carboxyl group and you will see uh, if the hydrogen is removed then you will see the uh, negative charge on the oxygen and if you see like another thing that is actually the tryptophan that is actually the amino acid that can convert into the NAD positive. So, in the 
nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide you will see the most as the name indicate dinucleotide so if you see first of all this is actually the this one this is actually the n a d positive in nad positive you will see different components like nicotine amide pentose and one phosphate this is actually the one nucleotide okay in the second situation you will see again the difference is actually the adenine pentose and phosphate these are basically the two nucleotides that why we call it dinucleotide so in this case as if we see here like at the nicotine amide you will see the positive charge you will see the positive charge so it's mean that the nico the charge positive charge is actually present at the nicotine amide level so that's why it is actually the nad positive positive mean positive charge is actually present on the nicotine amide okay this is the one case so this is actually the nad positive okay next it can convert into the NADP positive just by the additions of the phosphate group that actually comes from the ATP. So if you see like the ATP can convert into the ADP by giving one phosphate group to the NAD positive. The question is where does actually the phosphate group will attach to the NAD positive? So it will attach to the, the adenine. So phosphate group will attach to the adenine. So now it will become the NADP positive. So again you see two, it is actually the dinucleotide again. So the first thing if you see like nicotinamide that again contain the or carry the positive charge one pentose and one phosphate this is actually the one nucleotide second thing if you see you will see the adenine okay now this adenine has phosphate group it's not just a phosphate atom phosphate group has different structure like this way h3po4 phosphoric acid and you will see the uh, phosphate group. This is actually the phosphate group that will attach to the adenine. This is actually the nicotine amide. Next is for the adenine. Nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide and phosphate just for the addition of the phosphate group. So now the it means that all these niacin, nicotine amide and tryptophan can convert into the NAD positive and it can again convert into the NADP positive okay if someone wants to reduce the nad positive and nadp positive so you it mean that you if you you will just add the hydride ion so you will just add the hydride ion to the nicotine amide that it will convert into the nadh and adph so these are basically the reduced forms of the, uh, these two coenzymes forms. Okay. Important thing is that one milligram of niacin is equal to the 60 milligram of tryptophan. So this is another important thing. If I write it here, one milligram of the niacin is actually is equal to the 60 milligram of tryptophan. So it's mean that when someone take diet having tryptophan, so amount of the tryptophan required in large amount compared to the niacin. So this is an other important thing. Next, if we see when you will see the deficiency of the niacin, then what will happen? Most important, you will see the plagra. Plagra. In the plagra, you will see the three most important thing effects of the skin, GIT and the nervous system. So most importantly you will see the skin and at the level of the skin you will see the dermatitis. Dermatitis. Okay. Next you will see the GIT. 
track and in that situation you will see the diarrhea okay and cns central nervous system you will see the dementia so these are basically the 3d dermatitis diarrhea and dementia and if you see the severe deficiency of the niacin you can even see the death and death also uh, starting from the d okay if you see uh, it can also you can see the deficiency of the niacin in disease and that is the heart disease so it, it is actually a genetic disorder or disease in which you will see the defect of the transporter in the intestine and the kidney when you will see uh, that is actually involved in the transport of the different amino acid when you will see the heart disease then what will happen then the transport of the tryptophan from the intestine into the blood will block and ultimately you will see the deficiency of the different amino acids in the body and you will see due to the deficiency of the amino acid you will see the different symptoms in your body and actually amino acid are actually uh, excreted or uh, eliminating from our body or you can say loss of the different amino acid due to this disease okay next you can treat the hyperlipidemia with the help of the niacin so first of all if you see like here are basically the adipose tissue adipose tissues and in the adipose tissue you will see the lipolysis breakdown of the lipids and due to the breakdown of the lipids you will see the formations of the free fatty acid so from the adipose tissue you will see the release of the free fatty acid that is actually present in the blood stream and free fatty acid will goes to the liver and in the liver you will see the free fatty acid will convert into the tag triacylglycerol and tag is actually involved in the formations of the very low density lipoprotein okay in the very low density lipoprotein you will see the most important component is actually the tag okay very low density lipoprotein can convert into the low density lipoprotein but in the low density lipoprotein you will see the most important component will be the cholesterol that is actually present in the low density so this is important thing that is the normal process in the hyperlipidemia you will see the a lot of amount of the very low density lipoprotein and the low density lipoprotein and due to this you will see the most different situations like heart diseases so in this case you will see we have to block the synthesis of the very low density lipoprotein or you can say low density lipoprotein so if we use niacin niacin actually block the breakage of the lipids that is the lipolysis so if there is no breakage of the lipid there is no free fatty acid there is no conversion of the tag and ultimately there is no formation of the these two most uh, these two compounds very low density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein and ultimately you can cure the hyperlipidemia if i speak specifically then type 2b hyper lipoproteinemia can be cured with the help of the niacin actually there are a lot of different types of the hyperlipidemia so this is the case and if you see that the important thing these low density lipoprotein is dangerous to our health but the high density lipoprotein is helpful or provide the protections against the uh, hyperlipidemia and the different uh, heart diseases so this is all about the vitamin b3 or you can say niacin if you have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much